Let's, um, let's give Connor Merrigan a warm welcome up here. He's going to talk uh, about certified natural gas for the win. All right, I really don't know how to follow hydrogen, but um, that's OK. This is, this is perfect. I, I, I'll take it. Go ahead. Um, so once upon a time, we heard this story that uh, natural gas was going to be the bridge between coal and uh, renewable energy. Today, I'm going to talk about whether that's still true. Uh, it was a while ago when that, uh, that happened. So um, it is true that natural gas, when it's burned, emits about half the amount of carbon as coal. So that's good. Uh, the problem is not that it's the methane. It is how much methane, while well, coal also releases methane when it's mined, natural gas is methane. So uh, mostly. Uh, the, why is that a problem? It comes down to the global warming potential. So if we look at 100 years, 100 year time frame, uh, methane is about 25 times as bad as carbon dioxide. But over 20 years, it's about 80 times. And it lives for about 10 years. So what they figured out was that Methane leaks are the problem, and how much it leaks then becomes the problem. If it's 1%, like the EPA said a while ago, that's not bad. If it's more, like a lot of other people think, it's bad. So where does it leak? It leaks more depending on the basin, the geologic basin. These are the geologic basins where it's extracted in the US. And it depends based on the mix of oil and gas and the amount of infrastructure and the quality of that infrastructure in that particular basin. How does it leak? It leaks from valves. It leaks from, uh, from pumps. It leaks in a number of uh, operational characteristics are how it leaks. And you can actually measure it in this way. So we know how it leaks. We know where it leaks. Uh, one moment to say American natural gas, best natural gas in the world. Maybe not uh, Switzerland. Uh, but uh, you know, maybe there's a couple places that are better. But even better than American gas, Colorado natural gas. Yes. Uh, how, so what do we do? Uh, there's industry groups. Industry group One Futures right here. They have a methane intensity across all their 50 members me representing a lot of the natural gas of 0.42%. Uh, why that's important, they take the entire value chain of natural gas. Each of these has a particular uh, target segment, or they have a target intensity, and they should all add up to 1%. Again, they got to 0.42. That's good. Um, but it is also being reported by industry. Uh, so uh, it's using EPA models. Uh, there are things like flares in the back end. Uh, there are, uh, we need a better way than just having industry certify themselves. Um, and so uh, the, the question becomes, how do we do that? And the answer is with actual certification. We don't know what to call this stuff. We don't know whether to call it any of these acronyms. It doesn't exist yet. Uh, none of these is the answer yet. But these are, the, these are the systems that are certifying this as low methane intensity gas. The way they do it, they look at grading it. Uh, they look at methane intensity. They look at the practices that operators are doing. They look at inspections. And they look at whether it's being, how often it is being monitored so they can fix it as fast as they possibly can. That's how it works. And because of that, it actually does certify individual molecules of gas. So every month, it is continuous. It is ongoing. They are saying that these gas molecules leak less than average. They leak less than anywhere else. How do they measure that? They have devices like this. Uh, they say uh, this is a continuous monitoring device, not required by the EPA, who says you can do it monthly or weekly, depending. Uh, this one's Denver-based. And it looks real time, so as soon as there's a leak, it can be fixed. Uh, there's a number of protocols behind this, so it's not just the, these, uh, these groups. This is the uh, global one, is the OGMP 2.0. And Veritas is also more protocols behind it saying, how do we do this right? How do we measure it? How do we verify it? How do we certify it? The end goal is to have cargoes, like this one, uh, that people will pay more for. There you have natural capitalism at work, right? If people are going to pay more for gas that leaks less, then everything works. Um, and that is the hope uh, for where this is going. Right here in Colorado, Excel, your, the majority of people in this room, has committed to buying certified gas. That's great. Um, so we are, again, in the forefront of where this is happening, uh, which is, frankly, fantastic news. But the bottom line is natural gas demand in every realistic scenario is going to increase for at least the next five years. There's not a single scenario, net zero scenario, whatever. It is going to happen. So the question is, what do we do about it? And I believe that the answer is certify it. So when we talk about that bridge, 
If you're going to use natural gas, make sure it's certified natural gas. Uh, make sure that you are advocating for that. Make sure that your utility is using certified natural gas, right? Which gets down to ultimately what can you do? There is no utility program out there that offers certified natural gas right now because it's so new. Ask for it. If you want to electrify, electrify. Go for it. But you want hydrogen? Hydrogen, right? But for everybody else that is using natural gas, that's the answer. Thanks.